Hi, everybody. My name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. And we're the Yahoo and the Tori YouTube channel. And we are on the last chapter of Mark and... Uh, we have one more chapter of this. Oh, we do have one more? Yeah, it goes 16. Oh, start fail. Okay, we have one more chapter after today, and we are ending the Mark series here very shortly. It will be tomorrow, the day before Shabbat, which will be really super cool. And today is a bath day for the dogs. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. Everyone good? Yeah. Thank you guys, everybody, who our little family who's out there. We really, really, really appreciate all of you guys. We love you guys all. We love your support. And we hope you guys are all having a wonderful week. And your week is prosperous and it is in Yah's glory and love. Today is the fifth day of our Creator's Week. It is month eight. It is the 22nd day of this month on our Creator's calendar. And that might confuse people, but this is the Gregorian um, uh, satanic one. So we are on November 17th, and I guess next week is the pagan holiday of Thanksgiving where they actually fried the Indians to begin with and like literally burned the Indians uh, to, uh, alive in a fire. It was a very violent encounter. And so um, nowadays, I guess we all just hang around and, and you know tell stories and yarns of how nothing ever went down like that. But most people have no history of what's really going on in the world. And so that was it. And so if you're celebrating Thanksgiving, you are absolutely not celebrating a holy day. It is not our father's um, day at all. And so it is not one of his feasts. And so we shouldn't be doing it. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Are you guys looking forward to bathing the dogs? Mm, Anyone? Nope. Mm. Yeah, no, it's... It's good when they get bath, but it's a, it's a long process. They love the bath, but it is hard work. It's very, very hard work. I can't explain to folks how it, hard it is to thoroughly wash 10 dogs and house and everything. And it's hard. Okay, here we go. So, um, anyone have anything interesting? Um, no, not really. Anyone have a praise and worship? Give me a praise and worship real quick. As in like... As in anything you guys are. You are happy about that you are... Praise our creator about something you are built finally and you can do things that other things can't. Just something that you are um, happy that our creator has done, that he has, has enabled us to do. Um, I'm happy that uh, the creator has given us dominion over the animals, that we didn't get destroyed by the snake that showed up in our kitchen yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those are, the, I. you know, I was thinking about that the other day. And we didn't actually, I. you know, until we didn't, when we were reading the Torah the other day and it, it talks about how our creator made all the animals scared of us. It never really hit home until that moment. And now I, I'm thinking about that quite often. And, you know, if, it, you know, we have a world where, you know, a fly will land on you and, you know, you go to swat it and fly away and things of that nature. Imagine if those things were not scared of you, right? Everywhere you go, the animals would swarm you. Even if you kill them, they wouldn't be scared of you. So we could have totally been destroyed right out of the gate simply by mosquitoes, gnats, flies, all of these things that would come and attack us because they have zero fear of humans and um, we would just be annihilated. Jade, what do you got? Uh, I'm thankful for the dogs that they uh, are our friends. Thankful for the dogs that are our friends. Yep, they are our friends and they are cuddly friends and they are... Um, we have an opportunity that most people will never ever have and probably don't want to have is having a pack and is having... This kind of love, this kind of companionship, this kind of protection, um, we can go about and do whatever business we want to do. And if the if the evil people of the Holy Scriptures decide they want to jump our fence, the only the only thing we can do is is try to stop the dogs. I don't know what else we would try to do, but you know, our Creator has protected us for a time such as this, so that we are able to do what we need to do, and we're not having to look over our shoulder. And so. That is, that is something amazing. Nicole, what do you got? I was going to say both the snake and the dogs because the dogs were the ones that first saw the snake and then the dog and the snake for not getting anybody. Yeah. Like the yeah. messengers keep protecting us that, from that. That was your same one. That was the same one. I I'll think of something real quick. But yeah, that is, that is something as well. Our dogs have literally saved our lives more than one occasion. More than one occasion. Even though we end up scraped up, jacked up, PTSD'd up from dog fights and things of that nature. It is a very incredible experience hanging out with these dogs and living in, within a pack. And I, it, it's just something that's, that's quite amazing. Eli, do you have anything else? Uh, yeah, thank you for our chickens. They're pretty cool. Like, uh, they lay eggs. They go to me. It's also pretty cool watching them just grow up and they just get bigger every day. They do. They, they absolutely do. Uh, the miracles of our creator and the timeline of his stuff is, is simply amazing. You know, you can have a chicken. How long does it take? 24 days to, to hatch an egg? 27. 21. 
21, 21. Okay, we got three different things, so Nicole knows. That's 21 funny. days, so you can have a chicken that lays an egg, and 21 days later, a little fully functioning baby pops out. Not fully functioning at that stage, but very close. They pop out. The food that they have is inside the egg. They eat the egg. They eat through the egg, and just the entire hatching process, the entire... Every single thing that you can think of is perfection when it comes to creation. So the other day I was, I don't remember exactly what I was doing, but I was doing something to where I had to use my fingers and I had to grab something and I just, it hit me that without the kind of fingerprints that we have, without the kind of grip, without having five fingers, everything we would do would be different. We have an amazing thumb. The thumb can reach around and grab things. We have a little baby pinky finger, as they call it, and it can wrap around things and you have grip. You don't just have these little bones, but you're able to grip things and hold things and function. And think about your lips. If we didn't have lips, you'd go to try to take a drink of water, right? And it would come down right down your face. Every single thing. Imagine not having eyelids, right? We would walk out every single day and a dust, a blast of dust would hit us and we'd all be on the ground trying to get the dust out of our eyes. Think about reflexes. Imagine that piece of glass or that piece of something that came flying at you that you were able to turn your head, you were able to close your eyes, it got your eyes something, but you had it didn't take your eyeballs because you were able to react within milliseconds, things that you can't even, that we wouldn't be able to observe in real time, we're able to have reflexes, able to get away from it, we're able to survive. Our bodies, our, everything we have is made in such an amazing fashion, I cannot wait for five minutes that I can sit down with our creator, maybe a son, I'll, I'll even hang out with Moshe because he would know and just discuss this stuff. And how did our creator make this? How did he start out? Did he model us? Did he make arms that moved around? The other day I was like trying to itch something on my back. For the most part, when I was in my youth, I could reach, reach, each, reach around and itch anything that I was looking for. Not a problem. As you get older, that's not, that's not good. But think of that when you design something. If we wanted to design what we have close to a human and have the flexibility, have the movement, have everything. Let's go over some, some injuries, okay? Um, earlier this week, you had blood coming off of four, four limbs. There was four limbs that were bleeding. I had four limbs that were bleeding and it took days and days and days. How's your knees now? Uh, knee still hurts. Still hurts? Still hurts. Yeah, you have a big old road rash on yours. I have less of a road rash. Mine's, it still hurts. I agree. Um, yours was worse than mine, but... We, we were bleeding out, we were pussing out, and then all of a sudden, right, we cling it off, and then it starts getting this, this hard shell around it. And this hard shell develops into a what we call a scab. But underneath of that, everything is being repaired. You know, and I'll take from the last dog fight where they, they destroyed, they, I lost my right th thumbnail. M mostly everything, but just a little piece of it. It, it. Over the course of months and months and months, it has come back and I have functioning hands again. You can get destroyed. You can get damaged. And, you know, people that are like, well, I, I'm, I'm an atheist. I, I really don't believe in anything out there. How can that be? How can you look at creation? How can you look at just the human body, the anatomy of the human body, the anatomy of every creature that has been created? And how can you say there is no creator? Did it just random happenstance? Did this just roll the dice and all of a sudden we have a perfect human being? Absolutely not. Without a shadow of a doubt, our creator lives. He designed intelligent design. He gave you a free will. He gave me a free will. And we can choose to follow him or we can choose to follow Hasatan. And so those who follow him keep the Torah. They keep the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They write it upon their hearts, their minds, their souls. They rejoice to it. They sing to it. They praise to it. They do everything to it. And that's part of our life as well as the, as the faith of Messiah Yahushua. All right. So let's get in. Anyone have anything on that? No. I'll get off my soapbox. Here we go. Here we go. Mark 15. And immediately in the morning, the chief Kohenian took counsel with the elders and scribes at all the council. Having bound Yahushua, they led him away and delivered him to Pilatus. And Pilatus said, ask him, you are the sovereign of the Yehudian. And he answered and said to him, you say it. And the chief Kohenian accused him of much, but he made no answer. And Pilatus again asked him, saying, Have you no answer? See how they witness against you? But Yahushua still gave no answer, so that Pilatus marveled. And at a festival he released to them one prisoner, whomever they were asking. And there was one called Baraba, chained with his fellow rebels, who had committed murder in the uprising. And the crowd, crying aloud, began to ask, as he had always done for them. 
But Pilatus answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the sovereign of the Yahudium? For he knew that the chief Kohenim had handed him over because of envy. And the chief Kohenim stirred up the crowd that he should rather release Barabbas to them. Okay, what kind of power are these people able to have that they're able to control a mob? Well, they're like, they're, they're the mobsters, they're the head mobsters. We, we just saw them deal with Yahushua. They just went and grabbed Yahushua and put him up there. They obviously have some form of power where they can take the guards and they can be like, let's go get this dude. Yeah, and, and they, are, they are some evil dudes. Now, these guys, um, supposedly, like the Hallelujah Scriptures, are a Torah, right? Supposedly, these guys know the Torah. So we know the Torah. We wouldn't want to do things like bear false witness, right? That would be breaking the Torah. Our creator would frown upon such things. Um, all of these things that we're doing, if we are crossing the Torah at any level, at any degree, then we're in the wrong. And we need to come back and we need to figure out what we're doing and we need to repent and we need to get back under the law of the Torah. 12. And Pilatus answered and again said to them, what then do you want me to do with whom you call the sovereign of the Yahudim? And again, they cried out, impale him. And Pilatus said to them, why, what evil has he done? And they vehemently cried out, impale him. And Pilatus wanting to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them and having whipped he delivered Yahushua over to be impaled. Okay, so our Messiah just got beat again. Um, this Roman whipping is not some, this is not like the spankings by your father, right? It's not lay down on the, on the ground and have your behind little reddened. This is about these people that delivered whips. They were professional torturers. So these guys aren't just some average guy that is in. So they didn't hand him over to some guy that just got a whip, right? Uh, this is a guy whose job is to beat people relentlessly, right? Your job is, is essentially a torture, right? So they handed him over, and I don't know how many beatings he took, and a whip. And, you know, most of us have never had a whip across our back. Most of us have never, ever had a whip across our back. So when we understand the kind of level of violence that this was it was it, it wasn't just that they handed him over he, he got whipped right they, they put all of this into one sentence right release Bar barabba to them and having whipped right and having whipped that wasn't just a well that's it this is a whipping thing this was a beating the romans made sure he was beat now why did they beat him right here uh, probably because it was a custom of man's sins, right? You have like 40 beatings. No, these are Roman people. They said nothing to do with this. Is, this was is Romans that this just whipped Pilate, him. This was Pilate's way of like disciplining him. He was just going to let him go. But because the people were so mad about it, they was like he had no other choice but to kill him. He was just trying to prove a point to the... Trying to keep him alive. He was, he was like, look, he's disciplined. He's good. You guys di discipline your people like this. You let him go. You say, go sin no more. Here you go. And, but and that these, wasn't enough for him. But these people are just so bloodthirsty. They're just like, well, let's kill this dude. They are bloodthirsty. Yep, they are bloodthirsty. Okay. And the soldiers led him away into the court, which is in the palace. And they called together the entire squad and decked him with purple. And they plated a crown of thorns, put it on him. Now, why did they put him in purple? Because uh, it means like purple is a sign of royalty, is a sign of like kingship. When you have like a purple robe, it means you're a royal, it means you are higher than the rest. And in this instance, they were mocking him. Right? Yeah, they but... were like, hey, hey, king, do what, do what you want. Okay. They decked on him with purple and they plated a crown of thorns and put it on him. Okay. Um, how many of you guys, I mean, we, we live in, in the world of thorns out here, right? There are some nasty thorns that you could, like some of the plants out here, you could probably die from. There's some that will stab right through you like a knife. And, um, you know, it, it is when they made a crown of thorns, this was this was some sort of next level brutish um, evil. Right. You can you can you you go out when you prick your finger with one thorn. But when they jam an entire crown of thorns and smash that onto your head, we're dealing with a man who is just being beaten. Then they took him and he's probably very weak. He's very thirsty. He's very tired at this point. I doubt he slept from the night before, so he's tired, and now they smash these spiky thorns up on top of his head, and they began to call out to him, greeting sovereigns, sovereign of the Yahudium, and they kept beating him on the head with a reed, and were spitting on him, and bending the knee, they were bowing down to him. Guys, this is, when, the, when you have a spike in your hand, 
the first thing you do is you pull the thorn or the sticker out. They stuck this and they crushed it into his skull so that these thorns are now penetrating through his skin and they are onto his skull and he is bleeding. And then they smashed this, a reed onto your head. You're having a, a, a blunt object smashing. It's like a hammer driving nails in. And if, if you guys do not understand the torture that our Messiah is taking right now, this is a beating. This is a beating, beyond beating. I don't think any of us would be able to deal with this at this at all. And when they had mocked him, they took the purple off him, which was probably coated in blood, right? They pulled that off. It was, it was, without a shadow of a doubt, it would have been bloodied. And put his own garments on him and let him out to impale him. And they compelled a passerby, Shimon, a curion, coming from a field, the father of Alexandros and Rufus, to bear his stake. And they brought him to the place, Golgotha, which is translated, place of a skull. And they were giving him wine mixed with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. And when they impaled him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them, what each one should take. And it was the third hour, and they impaled him. What is the third hour, Nicole? Nine o'clock in the morning. Nine o'clock in the morning. And the inscription of his accusation was written above, the sovereign of the Yahudim. And with him, they impaled two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. And the scripture was filled, which says, and he was reckoned with the lawless. And those passing by were blaspheming him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you who destroy the Mishkin and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the stake. So now he's tired, he's beaten, he's literally dangling in the air, suspended by his own wrists and his feet with a nail driven between them. And the people come by and at his very worst, they still won't shut up. They still mock him. 31. And likewise, the chief Kohenan and the scribes mocking to one another said, he saved others. He is unable to save himself. Oops, I'm lost here. I got to get to the other side. Hold on, folks. Hamashiach, the sovereign of Yisrael. Uh, Eli, you just did it to me again, buddy. Sorry, you were still reading that one. So we got to get our game together, my friend. Okay, now that one's screwed for a while. Hamashiach, the sovereign of Yisrael. Come down now from the stake so that we see and believe. And those who were impelled with him were reproaching him. And when the sixth hour came, darkness came over all the land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Yahushua cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama shebakatani, which is translated, my El, my El, why have you forsaken me? So why has his father forsaken him, gentlemen? Because basically that he took the sins of the world. He is no longer like in the sight of Yah. When he took those, he felt the separation between him and Yah. Yeah, for the first time in his life, he had sin upon him, right? And he understood everything about this and how evil the sin is. And for some of those standing by, when they heard it, said, See, he is calling Eliyahu. And someone ran and filled a sponge with vinegar and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink, saying, Leave him. Let us see if Eliyahu comes to take him down. Now, we have, um, Brother Glenn told us a little bit about the um, sponge and vinegar a little bit. And it was a, it was a Roman kind of like almost an, uh, uh, a, almost a pain medicine or it was something, not really a pain medicine, but it was something to prolong the death. And that basically you would live longer in agony is how these cruel Romans do this stuff. And so um, that's what we're up against. And Yahushua cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. And the veil of the Mishkin was torn in two from the top, from top to bottom. And when the captain who was standing opposite saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the Ben of Elohim. So the captain dude just died. What's that? Uh, did the captain dude just die? No. No. So once again, saw that he cried out. Oh, oh, and saw it. Maybe he did. Oh, he saw Messiah Yahushua. He saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last. That was Messiah Yahushua. I thought maybe he was like, it was the son of Elohim that died. No, it was the captain right there, and the guys, and Messiah Yahushua was on the stake, and he's like, he breathes it, and then he dies, and then he says, truly, this man was the son of Elohim. A little light to say that, buddy. Uh, 
Not necessarily. Not necessarily. These people were not. I mean, these were these were not the lost sheep of Yashrael, right? These are the Romans. These are the Gentiles, and you know, there's more faith in these guys than, than in his own people. Forty, and there were also women watching from a distance, among whom also Miriam from Magdala, and Miriam the mother of Jacob the less, and of Yosef and Shaloma, who also followed him and tended him when he was in Galo, and many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when the evening had come, because it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Shabbat, Yosef of Ramithian, a prominent council member, who was himself waiting for the reign of Elohim, came boldly in to Pilatus and asked for the body of Yahushua. But Pilatus wondered whether he was, wonder, whether, excuse me, but Pilatus wondered whether he was already dead. So summoning the captain, he asked him if he was already dead. And when he had learned from the captain, he gave the body to Yosef. And he, having brought, bought fine linen, took him down and wrapped him in linen and laid him in a tomb, which had been hewn out of the rock and rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. And Miriam from Magdala and Miriam of Yosef saw where he was laid. All right, gentlemen. So we have our Messiah that was just killed again in a brutal fashion. Um, I got to admit, I don't like reading these these parts of this. Um, one he, of the books, a little more descriptive of the beating, these, these, these ones kind of just came out, but one of the, either Luke or John talks more about his whipping and stuff. Yeah, and it's, it's hard, it's hard when you put this stuff into one verse, right? And he was beaten. Um, that doesn't really give you any kind of real honesty to what beaten means when it comes down to Roman violence and the violence that uh, violent men can can incur no, on people. Violent, the Romans are just like violent. The history they're of the warriors. Romans is just yeah, violence. They're, they're war. Yeah, they're, they're they're warriors. Yeah, they're they're war mongers, and they um they they are a very violent uh, civilization. All right, gentlemen. I guess that is it. Um, I wish we had a better note we can leave this on. I guess the better note that we can leave this on is there is hope, and that even though our Messiah was killed here, our Messiah is not dead. Our Messiah has ra has been risen. He has been raised from the dead. He is no longer in this state. He will never, ever be in the state again. So um, we may feel extremely horrible for this situation, but the future, he is not going to come in peace. He is not going to come with love. He's not going to come in, in ready to uh, save the world because he already came to save the world. Okay. Yahushua died. He took these. He took this beating so that you didn't have to take the spiritual beating. He did this so that you could live an eternal life. So don't let him down. Don't don't take his command and throw it away and just tell him what he's done is nothing. Yeah, yeah. When you eat bacon, when you when you don't care about the law, statutes, and commands, you are saying that the the beating that Messiah Yahushua took took does not really matter to you. It does not apply. And until we all take these beatings ourselves, you will never understand how much of a beating Messiah Yahushua took. And so we have to give him all respect. We have to give him all due. That is due. That is our king, right? That is our king. That's King Messiah, Yahushua. That is who's coming to reign. That is who is coming to free us. That is who is coming to get us out of these terrible lands. And one day we will all be in a land and we can all be happy. The, the evil is, is gone away from us, that we are under the reign of leadership that we need because we don't have any leadership right now. The only leadership we have is the Torah. But our physical king is coming. His dad has been here with us all the time. We have the Ruach HaKadosh. We have all of the spirits. We have our, our creation that proves our creator lives. And we have our bodies and our life. Every time you take a breath of air, realize who created that air. Realize who made it that you could live and function off things that are invisible and you can't even see. But imagine trying to hold your breath and seeing how well you live. So let's take it at that. Guys, thank you very, very much. Family, we love you guys very, very much. And we will um, call this good. Tonight's Youth for Yah. Tonight is Youth for Yah. Yah willing. We've had a really bad uh, run at this. So hopefully the dogs, everybody's calm today. So hopefully we will make this. Thank you guys very much. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.